again. I was just doing some light reading. This is the Munsell Soil Color book, and you will learn about that today in training session number two. Today we'll cover the topics of artifact identification in the field, both prehistoric and historic artifacts. First, let's take a look at prehistoric lithic artifacts. Lithic artifacts are some of the most common prehistoric artifacts that you will find in the field. These include flakes, cores, and a variety of projectile points ranging from the Paleo-Indian period all the way up to the Mississippian period. You can usually recognize a flake by several characteristic traits. Most flakes would typically have two distinct sides, and these are a ventral side, as pictured here and there, and all here. The ventral side is typically a smooth surface, and they will have also a dorsal side, and this is the side of the flake where you can see previous flake scars that have come off the core during the flint napping process. Flakes also have a striking platform, and this is where the flake has been knocked off the core. Another type of lithic debitage comes in the form of what we call angular shatter. These are not as easy to identify as flakes as they do not possess a clear ventral and dorsal side. However, you can identify them typically by the sharp edges of where previous flakes were removed. Cores are usually larger than flakes and you can typically distinguish them by a large chunk of chert rock or other similar microcrystalline rocks. The process of creating a stone tool begins with the core. And on some of these samples, you can see where a series of flake scars appear, such as here and here. These are where flakes have been reduced. Projectile points are among the most fun to find in the field. When found, these are important because they represent the certain time period at which the site was occupied. Projectile points are considered to be a diagnostic artifact. Certain points are made in different styles, and we can usually distinguish the styles by the base of the point or a hafting element. Certain hafting elements were used to attach a projectile point to a spear or even an arrow. When identifying a groundstone tool, you want to look for certain traits such as uncharacteristically smooth rock, divots in the rock, or evidence of pecking on a certain surface. The final type of prehistoric lithic artifact is firecracked rock commonly referred to as FCR. This type of rock is sometimes used in fire pits and it cracks during the heating process, thus the name. Now let's take a look at prehistoric pottery. Prehistoric pottery is a little more rare to find than lithic artifacts. 
This is because the material it is created out of is a little harder to preserve. Prehistoric pottery is usually considered a diagnostic artifact. On these shards, you can see that this one is cord marked because of the repetitive design on the surface. This one here seems to have been decorated as well. In prehistoric pottery, you can usually look at the sherd in cross section to determine the temper the pottery was made out of. The white specks in this one show that it has been tempered with shell. Some pottery has different tempers, and these can include crushed rock, sand, and grit. It is easy to confuse prehistoric pottery with a smooth rock. However, all you need to do is look at the temper. Now that you know a little bit more about prehistoric artifact identification, let's get into the historic stuff. Historic artifacts include, but are not limited to, ceramics, metal, glass, and brick. Depending on a certain style of historic artifact, we can determine the time period in which it comes from. So let's get to learn a little bit about historic artifacts. Historic ceramics are something you'll encounter in the field quite often. These are a lot easier to immediately identify as compared to prehistoric pottery. In the field, you'll find stoneware, yellowware, redware, whiteware in a variety of decorations, and porcelain. Historic glass comes in a variety of shapes and sizes. It also appears in a number of colors. These colors help us identify the time period in which it was created. Historic glass is usually divided into two main categories, and this is container glass or flat glass, often window glass. Very rarely will you find a whole bottle, but when you do, it contains a number of attributes that are really helpful in determining the time period in which it was made. These include the presence or absence of mold seams and certain lip finishes in the bottle, such as here, there, here, or whether or not there's any embossing on the bottle. Certain bottle bases are also important to determine the time period in which it was made. This one here has a pontal scar which shows the manufacturing process in which the bottle was created. You also may encounter a number of architectural materials. This does include window glass as well as nails, bricks, spikes, doorknobs, and more. On certain nails, you can tell that they were cut instead of the more modern version of wire nails that we see today. You can tell by looking at the profile of these nails and how they taper on one side, here, and they're straight on the other side, here. Architectural materials are important because it helps us define if whether or not there was a historic structure in the area. The artifacts that you find in the field will be sent to the lab for processing. 
It's important to remember that the artifacts you find in the field will not be as clean as the ones shown so far in the video. Often, the artifacts that you find will be covered in a layer of dirt. Sometimes you'll have to scrape off this layer of dirt and look at the artifact a little closer to determine if it's really anything worth collecting. So now you should feel a little bit more comfortable identifying prehistoric and historic artifacts in the field. Let's get out in the field and dig a shovel test.